Okay, so early in the week, I, I, I posted this story on our uh, fan page, The African History, African History Network, and it deals with um, uh, racism when it comes to home appraisals, racism when it comes to home appraisals. And there is, uh, there's a huge story from the New York Times uh, dealing with this. Uh, the name of the story, Home Appraised uh, with a Black Owner, $472,000 with a white owner, uh, $750,000. Home appraised uh, with a black owner, $472,000 with a white owner, $750,000. Okay. So uh, I want to talk about that here in the uh, first, uh, uh, as a lead story today. Uh, we're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. And our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P, uh, as well. So, we're working through uh, some technical difficulties here. But if we look at this uh, first story, now this is from August 18th, 2022, from the New York Times, and it was updated uh, August 19th. Um, Nathan, Dr. Nathan Connolly, and his wife, Shani Mott, say an appraisal company undervalued home based on their race the couple has filed a lawsuit in maryland the couple has filed a lawsuit uh in maryland now and here's a uh, picture of the couple as well now they messed with the wrong person because he's a uh dr Con uh, dr nathan Conley is a professor of history at john hopkins university okay so last summer nathan Conley and his wife shani mott uh m-o-t-t uh, welcomed an appraiser into their house in Baltimore, Maryland, hoping to take advantage of historically low interest rates uh, and refinance and, and refinance their mortgage. Now, we also talked about how uh, uh, Wells Fargo came under fire when they turned away more applications to refinance home mortgages from African-American lenders than they actually approved. Now that's being investigated, but um, we, we dealt, we've dealt with that story here dealing with Wells Fargo also. Okay, now they believe, the couple believe that their house uh, improved with a new $5,000 uh, tankless water heater and a thirty and $35,000 in renovations. They believe that the house was worth uh, more than $450,000 that more than the $450,000 that they paid uh, for the house in 2017. Now, home prices have uh, been on the rise nationwide since the pandemic uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. They have gone up. Home prices have gone up 42 percent in the past five years, 42 two percent in the past five years, according to the website flow.com. But 2020 valuations, the Maryland appraisal company, 2020 valuations, put the home's value at $472,000. And in turn, Loan Depot, a mortgage lender, denied the couple refinance loan, denied the couple a refinance loan because of the appraisal value. Now, Dr. Nathan Connolly said he knew why he, his wife and three children, his children are aged uh, 50, ages 15, 12 and nine are African-American. Uh, now, Dr. Nathan Connolly is a professor of history at John Hopkins University. And he is an expert on redlining and the legacy of white supremacy redlining and the legacy of white supremacy in American cities. And much of his research focuses on the role of race in the housing market. Now, months after the phrasal, the uh, couple applied for another finance loan. They removed family photos and had a white male colleague who was another John Hopkins University professor, Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University. Uh, uh, the, the white colleague is a, uh, another Johns Hopkins University professor. So they had um, 
the, the 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 white friend stand in for them as the homeowner and we've seen new we've covered numerous stories about the same phenomenon happening and when this happens and they have somebody white to sit in to pretend to be the homeowner they took down all the african art they took down all the african-american and african related books you know i don't know if you want to have the destruction of black civilization you know out when the white appraiser comes you know by dr chancellor williams fantastic book don't know if you want to have that on the coffee table when the white appraiser comes okay how europe underdeveloped africa by walter rodney uh black man in the now and his family by dr yosef ben yakinen christopher columbus and the african holocaust slavery and the rise of european capitalism by dr john henry clark fantastic books i don't think you want to have those on the coffee table or have those visible when the white appraiser comes so they take down all the african art they take down the terry mcmillan books they take down anything they take down all the pictures etc and then they make it look like somebody white lives white lives there and all of a sudden <laughs> the the second appraiser right valued the house at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars value the house at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay um we're going to continue this on the other side of the break. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. All right. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. 313-778-7600 if you have a quick question or comment. Okay. Uh, so our lead story was... Um, this uh, big article that the uh, Washington, uh, that the New York Times had uh, this week came out August 18th. We posted this story on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. If you don't follow us on Facebook, you should go ahead and follow us, turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. Um, home appraised with a black owner $472,000 with the white owner $750,000 okay and this is uh, this continues this discussion that we've been having dealing with fighting against discrimination when it comes to home appraisals now if we look at um if we look at this here let me see hold on okay if we look at uh, if we go back to this article um 97 percent more than 97 percent of uh home appraisers are white according to the bureau of labor statistics and since the summer of 2020 when conversation uh conversations on race and discrimination uh, in the home valuation it, it, discrimination in America rose to the forefront following the murders of George Floyd. Dozens of black homeowners since then have alleged discrimination uh, in the home uh, valuations they received. Dozens of black homeowners, homeowners have alleged discrimination in the home valuations they received. Now, some have filed lawsuits in the biden harris administration in march of 2022 announced a set plan uh, announced a, a set of planned reforms to overhaul the appraisal industry and dismantle systemic bias now this is something i've talked about uh because if you read the 19 page document from whitehouse.gov and I, I, I mentioned this uh, when I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered Friday. I talked about this uh, when I was on uh, Reverend Al Sharpton's show uh, for two hours. I think I mentioned this when I was on his show for two hours uh, about three weeks ago, three Wednesdays ago, when I was on Faraji Muhammad's show on uh, the Black Star Media Network, Roland Martin's network. Uh, Faraji had me on this show two Wednesdays ago. Um, the, the document is called the Biden Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black people and communities across the country. The Biden Harris administration advances equity and opportunity 
for black people and communities across the country. So I know you have these people who call in the radio shows, national radio shows, even calling to um, this station and, and talking about Biden and Harris haven't done anything for black people. Now, the question I ask people like that, and they don't call into this show because they know better. They ain't stupid. They're not stupid enough to call in with that type of nonsense because they know they're going to get stopped. And I'm going to hit them with the facts. The question that I ask people like that is, how did you do the research? What articles did you read? What report did you read? What study did you read? How did you assess the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris administration, what has happened in the past 18, 17, 18 months. How did, how did you research that before you called in the radio shows talking that simple Simon ass nonsense? Because the evidence is there to prove that you're wrong. So this is, this is one of the things that I'm, I'm always perplexed by because nine, 99 times out of 100, when they call in with that nonsense, I want you to pay attention to something. They never cite sources. They don't cite articles. They don't cite studies. They don't cite fact sheets. They just put out opinions as if it's facts, but they can't back it up. So most of these people won't talk about the measures that the Biden-Harris administration are taking to fight against discrimination when it comes to housing appraisals. Some have filed lawsuits and the Biden-Harris administration in March of 2022 announced a set of planned reforms to overhaul the appraisal industry and dismantle systemic bias. So the people who say Biden isn't any, doing anything for black people, why don't they talk about this? Either one, they don't know it, or two, they don't want you to know it. Now, Dr. Nathan Connolly and Dr. Shani Mott uh, live in uh, live in the north live in the North Baltimore neighborhood of Homeland Homeland H O M E L A N D, known for its strong public schools and colonial architecture, which has earned it a place on the National Register of historic places. A majority of their neighbors are white. A majority of their neighbors are white. Now, according to their complaint, which was filed in uh, Maryland District Court on Monday, th this past Monday, which would have been um, August 15th, the couple applied to refinance their mortgage with Loan Depot in May of 2021. The lender, Loan Depot, approved a loan at a rate of 2.25%. And according to the complaint, told the couple that their home was likely now worth $550,000 or more. $550,000 or more. Uh, to conduct the appraisal, Loan Depot hired 2020 valuations as a subcontract. Now, Mr. Mr. Lanham, who's the owner of 2020 Valuations, conducted the inspection himself on June 14th, 2021. According to the complaint, Dr. Nathan Conley and his wife, Dr. Shawnee Conley, and their three children were home during the visit, and their house was also filled with family photos, children's drawings of figures with dark skin, a poster from the film Black Panther. See, you can't, you can't, you can't be Wakanda forever when the white appraisers come. Love the film Black Panther. Don't you gotta have Black Panther when and you all, you also gotta have the Black Panthers. You can't have you can't have a picture up of, of Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seal when the white appraisers come. I'm just hey, Huey P. Newton's one of my frat brothers, Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. But I'm telling you, when the white appraisers come, it's not a good idea to have the Black Panther Party for Self Defense have a picture up there with them with guns when the white appraisers come. I'm just, it's just, don't have, don't have the Black Panther, okay, from Wakanda, and don't have the Black Panthers from Oakland, from Oakland, California up when, when the white appraisers come. 
okay? I, you can do what you want to do. Take them down. Put them back up when they leave. I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> when, when, when we're trying to score high on the appraisal list, you did uh, nah, you, you need to take it down, okay? So they had a poster from the film Black Panther and literature by black authors. Now, Dr. Shani Mott lectures on literature and, Afri and, and Africana studies. You got to take down the, the Terry McMillan. You got to take down the Toni Morrison. You know, you had to take down the James Baldwin. You had to hide that. Um, you know, you, you, it's it's uh, so th this is this is the games uh, people have to play. Okay, you may be able to get away with a book by that. No, you can't get away with a book by Dr. King. Uh, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? You got to hide uh, autobiography of Malcolm X. Okay, you got <laughs> all that stuff. You got to put it away. Okay. <laughs> all right, now let's continue. So, um, quote, it would have been obvious to anyone visiting the home to a, uh, it would have been obvious to anyone visiting that the home belonged to a black family, the complaint said. The appraisal came back just $22,000 more than the family had paid for the home and loan depot based its, based its rejection on the couple's application on the low number loan depot based its rejection of the couple's application on the low number okay we'll continue this on the other side of the break also we'll talk about uh the department of justice um the department of justice saying that florida targets african-american voters we'll discuss that as well this is the african history network show on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation of Future Radio. Okay, uh, let's go back to this article here quickly. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in the number if you have a quick question or comment. All right, so um, the right before the break, we were talking about this story from uh, the New York Times. Home appraised with a black owner, $472,000, with a white owner, $750,000. Now, it, um, the couple, uh, Dr. Uh, Nathan Conley and Dr. Shani Mott, uh, the couple criticized the way that Mr. Lanham, who, who owned 2020 uh, Valuations, which is the home appraisal company, the couple criticized the way Mr. Lanham came up with his appraisal. Now, home appraisers uh, frequently uh, rely upon uh, the sales comparison approach, in which they weigh real, uh, in which they weigh real estate against the sale prices of similar nearby homes to determine value. Similar nearby homes to determine value. Now, uh, in Mr. Landham's appraisal. He selected three homes with value ranges uh, from $435,000 to $545,000. Three homes with values ranging from $435,000 to $545,000. A fourth comparable uh, or comp, as it's called, a fourth comparable which sold for $650,000 was ultimately not used in his valuation. Now the first home used the complaint, uh, the first home used the complaint argues would be considered a fixer upper, which the home of Dr. Nathan Conley and Dr. Shani Mott is not. Okay. Now the second home is outside the boundaries of the homeland neighborhood where they live amid a majority uh, black census block of homes. Now, the neighborhood that they live in is a predominantly white neighborhood, okay? So the second home that was the, that, that, that was the comp or comparable is outside of the boundaries of the homeland neighborhood where they live, and it's amid a majority black census block of homes. In the third home that was used in the comparison, Mr. Lanham, uh, according to according to the complaint, 
deducted fifty thousand dollars from the comparison from the comparison amount because dr Connolly and dr mott's home faces a busy street faces a busy street a deduction the complaint says that quote is excessive and is inconsistent with proper appraisal practices the complaint says that this deduction of fifty thousand dollars because the home faces a busy street is is quote is a, is excessive and is inconsistent with proper appraisal practices end quote now another twenty thousand dollars was deducted for the quality of construction for the quality of construction now all of the selected comparable homes the complaint says were of lower quality than dr Conley and dr mott's home and the appraisal incorrectly stated that their home had not received any updates for 15 years that's false also the appraisal also incorrectly according to them states that according to the complaint states that their home had not received any updates any improvements for 15 years now according to the complaint mr lanham quote cherry picked low value homes as comps end quote and by doing so he quote ignored legitimately comparable homes with much higher sales prices end quote now when reached by phone uh this past tuesday uh mr lanham declined to comment dr uh, nathan conley and dr shani mott uh wrote a letter to christian uh jorgensen a lending officer at Lone depot who had been there who had been their main point of contact up to that point challenging the appraisal so when we get these low ball appraisals we have to challenge them because you're dealing this 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 is directly related to the racial wealth gap this is directly related to a lack of intergenerational wealth so when we get these low appraisals we have to challenge them. now according to the complaint the loan officer Christian Jorgensen then stopped responding to their calls now uh, Jorgensen did not respond to requests for comment from the New York Times either now several months later the couple applied for a new loan with Swift Home Loans Swift Home Loans which partnered with Rocket Mortgage this is here in Detroit Rocket Mortgage Dan Gilbert this time they underwent a quote unquote whitewashing experiment a whitewashing experiment and this is one of the few times when i agree with whitewashing removing indications of blackness from their home and replacing them with signifiers uh that a white family might live there instead now they cleared their bookshelves of works by black authors okay yeah, because you gotta, you know, you gotta have your copy. You gotta have uh, your your book dealing with the Nat Turner Rebellion. You gotta have your, your book dealing with uh, the Amistad Slave Revolt. You know, all you, you can't can't have all that stuff up. You gotta put that in somewhere, take it over to a friend's house or something like that. You gotta have the Miseducation of the Negro by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Uh, James H. Cone's book. Uh, uh, martin malcolm in america a dream or a nightmare uh you definitely gotta you definitely have to hide um the book by professor uh charles e cobb jr let me see can i put my hands on it i think i have it right here in this stack uh he was a field secretary for SNCC, student nonviolent coordinating committee for five years in rural mississippi and he was organizing african americans uh to register to vote in rural mississippi okay we know mississippi was the lynching capital of america from 1882 to 1968 mississippi had 581 lynchings from 1882 to 1968 the most number of lynchings out of any state in the country okay now this book right here if you're trying to whitewash your home to get a higher appraisal 
This is one of the very few times I agree with whitewashing. You cannot have this book anywhere on the premises. The name of this book is called This Nonviolent Stuff Will Get You Killed. How Guns Made the Civil Rights Movement Possible. Okay? This you can't have this book anywhere on the premises. I'm not, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to tell you, okay? You can I love the book, love Professor Charles E. Conn Jr. This you can't you can't do that. When the white appraiser comes, you have to you have to hide the book, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> um let's go back to hold on, let's go back to the article here. And let's go to this one right here. All right. So they went through a whitewashing. All right. They cleared their bookshelves of works by black authors. They asked uh, white friends to share family photos and place those pictures in frames around the house. On their walls, they hung art bought at Ikea that showed uh, white people. OK, so. <laughs> So this, 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 this is understanding the rules of the game. Now, an American flag that was uh, presented to Dr. Uh, Shani Mott 10 years ago after the death of her father, uh, who was a Vietnam veteran, was removed uh, from storage, framed and placed on the mantle. Your posters of Colin Kaepernick, you got to take that down. Your pictures of, uh, of Malcolm X and Dr. King, your pictures of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, you got to take down the red, black, and green flag, the bandera, you got to take that down. You can't have that when the white appraiser comes. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to tell you. I'm trying to help you out here. All right. <laughs> Quote, we had we had to have a conversation with our kids about why we're pulling down all their drawings, Dr. Nathan Conley said. Quote, it's very humiliating to strip yourself of your own home. It's very humiliating to strip yourself of your own home all right now on the day um on the day of the second appraisal on the day of the second appraisal they left their home and had uh the white colleague answer the door okay so he goes to the door like mr belvedere or something like that all right on the day of the second appraisal they had their white colleague answer the door the second appraiser provided the $750,000 uh, estimate. Now, the homes pulled by the second appraiser were of significantly higher value than those selected by Mr. Lanham, according to the complaint, who owns 2020 Valuation Appraisal Company. The homes pulled by the second appraiser uh, were valued between $749,000 and $785,000. And while Mr. Lanham docked or or uh, uh, took away $50,000 or 10% from the comparable homes that were not on uh, a busy road, that were not on a busy road, the second appraiser deducted $15,000 or 2%. The complaint says that the 2% adjustment is consistent with industry standards. The $50,000 adjustment is not. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. This to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. IDO Network International, in collaboration with STL Black Woman, DACA and ACTA present the Royal Pilgrimage to the Americas, August 24th through the 28th. The African kings and queens are coming to you for business, networking, and sharing of Pan-African ideals. The venue will be the illustrious En Garde Arts Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri. A royal cultural experience and exhibitions, trade and investment opportunities in Africa, the Caribbean, and the Americas. A Royal Pan-African Summit hosting keynote speakers and a red carpet banquet. Come and witness our African Royal Coronation Ceremony. Register at www.idonetwork.org to book your ticket to wine and dine with African royalty. Vendor opportunities available. Get face to face with the royals who own the land and resources for business. Contact DACA for deal room information at 602-730-4572. Today, um, 
The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Welcome back to the African History Network show. All right, uh, in just a minute, Giovanni, we're going to clip number one. Okay, so uh, just uh, make sure that one's ready. Okay, I want to uh, wrap up with this um, article here from the New York Times, and this was our lead story. Uh, so this deals with, once again, another um, lawsuit dealing with discrimination when it comes to the home appraisal market. All right, now, uh, for this, the second appraisal only deducted fifteen thousand dollars for the uh, for the home facing a busy street, whereas the first appraisal uh, they were uh, deducted fifty thousand dollars. The the fifteen thousand dollar deduction or two percent of the overall appraisal value uh, is consistent with industry standards. Is consistent with industry standards. Now, race has long played a role in. Uh, housing policy in the United States. And African Americans are denied mortgages at a disproportionate rate. Now, the impact of redlining, which is a, a racist depression era uh, housing policy, continue, and it, it comes out comes from the uh, Homeowners Loan Corporation, developed about 1934. So uh, comes from the Homeowners Loan Corporation. So redlining was created by the federal government. The impact of redlining uh, which is a racist depression era housing policy continues to drive down home values in African-American neighborhoods and deprive resources for communities of color, especially African-American communities. But Dr. Mott and Dr. Connolly do not live in a black neighborhood. As I said, they live in a majority white neighborhood. The disparity uh, in their two appraisals echoes a lawsuit brought by Tanisha Tate Austin and Paul Austin, a black couple in California's um, California's Bay Area, who have accused an appraiser of lowballing their value by $500,000. We talked about that case here on this show as well. Now, that case said that uh, Mr. Austin is scheduled, that case said uh, Mr. Austin is scheduled for mediation, a chance to resolve the matter before heading to court. Uh, in September 2022, uh, Mr. Austin said, we're looking to, to hold people accountable. And that's what you have to do. We're looking to hold people accountable. Now, the Department of Justice made the unusual move in February of 2022, issuing a statement of interest in the Austin case. OK, um, uh, the case of uh, Tanisha Tate Austin and her, and her husband, Paul Austin. The, Depart the U.S. Department of Justice under Attorney General Merrick Garland, not William Barr, but Merrick Garland, made the unusual move in February of 2022 of issuing a statement of interest in the Austin case, underscoring the fact that appraisers who are bound by the Fair Housing Act of 1968 to not discriminate can be held legally liable if they do can be held legally liable if they do. Now, uh, Paul Austin uh, said it was a big step for the Biden-Harris administration to say that they want to want the appraisal industry to be overhauled. Now, why more people are not talking about this? I don't know, especially these simple Simon ass people who keep calling to these radio shows saying that the Biden-Harris administration they're not doing anything. They, for black people notice they don't cite sources they don't cite articles they don't cite studies 
they definitely don't cite this document here that I've talked about numerous times before. And um, to my knowledge, I'm the only person that's talking about this document, which I really don't understand. Uh, I don't think I've heard anybody from the White House talk about this. I haven't heard Tiffany Cross, haven't heard Joanne Reed, um, um, haven't heard anybody else. I talked about this on Reverend Al Sharpton's show when I was on. I, I, I referenced this almost every week on Roland Martin and Filter. I'm the only person I've heard talk about this document. I, I, I don't even understand that. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. All, all the black people in media ain't heard one person talk about this. The Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black people and communities across the country. Now, this was last updated February 28th, 2022. The original one came out October 2021. This has to be updated because there's so much that's happened since February 28th, 2022. Emmett Till anti-lynching bill, Jessica Tanji Brown Jackson, uh, the um, the uh, executive order 13985, the implementation uh, of the 300 strategies across 90 federal agencies to address uh, racism and discrimination, things like this. The, the implement the releasing of those uh, strategies came after February 28, 2022. But if we just look here, uh, they talk about home appraisals. OK, ensuring let's let's blow this up for the for the. So I want you to take a screenshot of this. All these dumbasses that call into these shows or that, you know, or that you follow on social media. Uh, I, I want you to screenshot this and show it to them and ask them. Why aren't you talking about this? Okay. It, 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 I find it very strange you're not talking about this. Ensuring black homeowners get full value for their homes. Ensuring black homeowners get full value for their homes. In June 2021, Biden Harris administration, well, President Biden directed the launch of a first of its kind interagency uh, effort to address inequity in home appraisals and conduct rulemaking to aggressively combat housing discrimination. Rulemaking to aggressively combat housing discrimination. The effort led by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, better known as HUD. Now that's Secretary Marsha Fudge, former member of the Congressional Black Caucus. The effort led by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, uh, Secretary Marsha Fudge and Domestic Policy Advisor Susan Rice, is developing a set of uh, policy actions and recommendations for President Biden to redress racial bias in home appraisals that will soon be released. OK, and it's been released since then. Uh, 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 if I remember correctly, it's been released since uh, February 28, 2022. Um, protecting and then they go on to talk about protecting black uh, black Americans access to housing by combating housing discrimination. Read this. This is part of this 19 page document that nobody talks about. If you know somebody else that talks about this document besides me and before me, please let me know because I don't know who they are. Um, this is at whitehouse.gov official website of the White House. Pretty powerful uh, document. Pretty powerful website. So check that out. Uh, read the rest of that article. If those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching for uh, a few minutes more because we're going to squeeze in the uh, segment from Roland Martin and filtered around the time here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF prevent us some technical difficulties. Be sure to visit my website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com and the AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, my new website. Uh, you can register for the online history classes uh, I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturdays, it is ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place right now for limited time only. Classes on sale $60, regularly $130. As soon as you register, you can watch the class we just did this past Friday, okay? And we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. And then on Sundays, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. All right, remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. is not over till we win Wakanda forever. And we'll talk to you next week. Peace.
Hotep, everybody. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. And I want to give a special shout out to everybody who has attended the 11th annual Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo. I just want to take a few minutes, and uh, we had a great presentation that I did uh, on Saturday. So I teach two online history classes. Uh, one on Saturday and uh, one on Sunday. On Saturday, the class that I teach, normally 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is called Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And this is normally a 10-week online class. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We can't start studying our history and slavery. Even when we study the transatlantic slave trade, which is important to study, we can't start in 1619 or in the 1440s with the Portuguese, when the Portuguese get involved in the transatlantic slave trade. We have to understand the history chronologically and deal with the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors, who enter into the Iberian Peninsula today known as Spain and Portugal from North Africa in 711 AD. When we discuss the transatlantic slave trade, we have to first understand that African people are the original people of North, Central and South America and have been in the land we call the United States at least 51,700 years. Now, the second class I teach is on Sundays, normally 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's called uh, From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Now, these classes are normally $130. They're on sale right now, $60. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded, so you can go back and watch it any time. So a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch the entire class. With both of these classes, I would say the content is PG-13, so you can use this with your children as well if you want to. Um, also, you can advertise with the African History Network. We have three new advertising packages. Our current promotion is buy one month, get one month free. We have a million followers at our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. And with our platinum package, um, we'll take our ads on our Facebook fan page uh, for you as well to um, help maximize your advertising campaign. And we take your 30 second and 60 second commercial we put into the rebroadcast uh, of our shows and also into the audio podcast of our shows as well uh we only have 20 advertising slots because we have a finite amount of advertising space uh email us at ahn show at the african history network.com ahn show at the african history network.com or call us 313-462-0003 all right right now it's corrects wrong behavior it's not over till we win wakanda forever and we'll talk to you soon peace the work that I do is larger than the fashion industry, it's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre, I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. iRedify is a black owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read ebooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iredify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Network International in collaboration with STL Black Woman, 
DACA and ACTA present the Royal Pilgrimage to the Americas, August 24th through the 28th. The African kings and queens are coming to you for business, networking, and sharing of Pan-African ideals. The venue will be the illustrious En Garde Arts Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri. A royal cultural experience and exhibitions, trade and investment opportunities in Africa, the Caribbean, and the Americas. A Royal Pan-African Summit hosting keynote speakers and a red carpet banquet. Come and witness our African Royal Coronation Ceremony. Register at www.idonetwork.org to book your ticket to wine and dine with African royalty. Vendor opportunities available. Get face-to-face -face with the royals who own the land and resources for business. Contact DACA for deal room information at 602-730-4572.